Hello everyone, welcome to another Critical Care Nursing Skills Review. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to easily interpret arterial blood gas. Alright, blood gas analysis is one of the complex processes out there for the healthcare professional. That's what most of us think. Fortunately, there are ways to easily decipher ABG results without breaking a sweat. And this is what this video is all about. Okay, learning how to interpret ABG results. There is no other way to do it but to start memorizing and knowing by heart the normal values and components of the ABG. But don't worry, it's only a few to memorize there. What are those values to know? The first value is the pH, which measures how many hydrogen ions are in the blood. Blood with high number of hydrogen ions is acidic and has a low pH. Blood with low number of hydrogen ions is basic and has a high pH value. The normal values for pH is ranging from 7.35 to 7.45. The second value is the carbon dioxide level. Remember that carbon dioxide is regulated by the lungs. And this will tell you if the problem is respiratory in origin. The fastest you breathe, the more you remove carbon dioxide. The slower you breathe, the more you retain carbon dioxide. It is measured in terms of partial pressure of carbon dioxide or PaCO2. The normal range from PaCO2 is 35 to 45 millimeter per mercury. Finally, the third value is the bicarbonate ions or HCO3. This will tell you if the problem is related to metabolic changes in your patient and refers to the renal system. The normal value is ranging from 22 to 26 millimole per liter. From these baseline values, you can begin to recognize the patient's problem if the results falls out of these ranges. Now. Once you have memorized that, there are only three steps needed in basic ABG interpretation. The first step is to examine the pH. It is acidotic or alkalosis. The lower the number, the more acidotic the patient is. Alkalosis is the opposite. The higher the pH, the more base is in the blood. Once you've determined whether there is too much acid or too much base, you can now move on to identify what causes this imbalance. Our body keeps acid-base balance to function well. The second step is knowing if it is respiratory or metabolic. So after you've determined whether the sample is acidic or alkaline, you need to find out if it's due to respiratory or metabolic causes. If the cause is respiratory, the PaCO2 will be out of the normal range, whereas for metabolic problems, the HCO3 will be abnormal. Low partial pressure of carbon dioxide points to respiratory alkalosis, and high bicarbonate can indicate metabolic alkalosis. On the other hand, high partial pressure of carbon dioxide indicates respiratory acidosis, and low bicarbonate can indicate metabolic acidosis. The higher the carbon dioxide in the blood becomes more acidic. I'm not saying that the carbon dioxide is acid because as carbon dioxide combines with water in the blood, it forms carbonic acid making the blood acidic. The carbonic acid then breaks apart into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen. The hydrogen makes the blood acidic. All right, the third step is knowing if compensated or uncompensated. Compensation is the body's attempt at correcting an imbalance. In an ABG analysis, we always examine the result if there is a compensation in this very tight balance between the concentration of acids and bases in the blood. There are different buffering systems in our body that permits blood and other bodily fluids to maintain a narrow pH range. These buffer systems are extremely efficient and different systems work at different rates. Three major buffer systems are responsible for regulating blood pH. 
the bicarbonate buffer system, the phosphate buffer system, and the plasma protein buffer system. Of the three buffer systems, the bicarbonate buffer system is arguably the most important as it is the only one that is coupled to the respiratory system. It takes only seconds for the chemical buffers in the blood to make adjustments to the pH. The respiratory tract can adjust the blood pH upward in a minute by exhaling the carbon dioxide from the body. The renal system can also adjust blood pH through the excretion of hydrogen ions and the conservation of uh, bicarbonate but this process takes hours to days to effect. Alright, how you will determine if compensated or uncompensated? For example, in acidosis. To know if the body is compensating, you need to examine the value of bicarbonate, whereas in alkalosis, we'd look at the level of PaCO2 doing. If the other level is still within normal ranges, meaning there is no compensation going on, or we can say the body is yet to fix the problem or has been unable to fix the problem. However, if the value has deranged then the body is trying to fix the problem or shall we say compensation is occurring. Next to identify is it's fully compensated or partially compensated. To know this, we need to refer back to the pH. If the pH is not within or close to the normal ranges, then a partial compensation exists. If the pH is back within normal ranges, then a fully compensation has occurred. A non-compensated or uncompensated abnormality usually indicates that an acute event is occurring in the body. And note, the term partial or fully compensated is used to describe the level of compensation and does not necessarily mean that the patient's ABG is normal or that they are healthy. Alright, do you remember the mnemonics rule, the respiratory opposite, metabolic equal? Others use this to simplify ABG interpretation. But I found this more confusing when you are in the real practice and ABG interpretation does not always go along with that mnemonics. The key to mastering ABG interpretation is by practicing it always as many times as possible. And you will be surprised how easy it is. Okay? Are you confident now in doing basic ABG interpretation? To further master this, Let's analyze different ABG results that I had prepared in the other video. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm expecting you to watch and do ABG analysis on that video.